Hi everyone. I hope you have been watching the series of videos that I have been putting up on different research designs. Today's video is the fifth video in that series. The links to the previous four videos are in the description section below. In today's video, I am going to be talking about the Solomon four group research design, which comes under the category of true experimental design. So as I mentioned in my previous video, research designs are basically categorized under five categories, the pre-experimental, true experimental, quasi-experimental, ex post facto design and factorial design. I have previously made three videos on the pre-experimental design and one video on the true experimental design. In today's video, I am going to be talking about the Solomon four group research, which is a part of the true experimental design. But before I do that, let me quickly brief you on the pre-test post-test control group design, which is a type of a true experimental design so that we can make a comparison between pre-test post-test and Solomon four group so that you know the difference. So in pre-test post-test, we have two groups which in which people are randomly assigned to either an experimental group or a control group. The experimental group is observed, subjected to the experiment treatment and observed again. And the control group is isolated from any influences of the experimental treatment. However, it is observed at the beginning and at the end of the experiment. The basic format for a pre-test post-test control group design is what you see on your screens. And in my previous video, I have discussed an example showing how two groups of people who may have low vitamin D levels have been randomly assigned. And then one of the groups was subjected to a vitamin D tablet. The confounding variables were controlled for such as sunlight and diet that may increase the vitamin D in your body. And then both groups were observed again and hopefully in one group a level high level of vitamin D was found due to the vitamin D tablets that were administered to the group showing a cause and effect relationship between vitamin D tablets and the increase of vitamin D in the human body. Now why am I discussing this is so that I can compare this to the Solomon four group design because one potential problem in this design is that the process of observing or assessing people before administering the experiential treatment or experimental treatment may in and of itself influence how people respond to the treatment. For instance, perhaps the pre-test increases the people's motivation. It makes them want to benefit from the treatment they receive. Now to address the question, what effect does pre-testing have? Solomon in 1949 proposed an extension of this pre-test post-test control group design. And this design involved four groups, as you see on your screens. These four groups were also randomly assigned, of course. But two additional groups were assigned who were not pre-tested. And this provided a particular advantage. If the researcher finds that in the final observation, groups three and four differ in much of the same way that groups one and do, one and two do, then the researcher can more easily generalize his or her findings to situations in which no pretest has been given. So in other words, the Solomon four group design enhances the external validity or the generalizability of the research findings. Now compared to pretest post test, this design obviously involves a larger sample and demands more of the researcher's time and energy. However, its principles value is in eliminating the pretest influence. When such elimination is desirable, this design would be ideal. So what you do is you adopt two more groups just to confirm your findings. And when your findings are confirmed by employing a larger sample, the generalizability of your findings will increase and examiners and reviewers will be impressed. This is of course, if you have access to a larger sample of people. So here again, you can see how the first two groups are very similar to the pre-test post-test control design. But then you have two additional groups in which one of the groups is administered the experimental treatment and the other, of course, is not. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you with my next video very soon in which I will take up the third type of true experimental design called the post-test 
only control group design and I will explain that with the help of an example to show the difference between that design and these two designs that we have discussed. Thank you for watching today's video and bye for now.